Hey guys, it's Robert here for Basketball Zone, here to break down the Raptors' loss 103-116 to the red-hot Brooklyn Nets. Here are my three takeaways from this loss. So my first takeaway from tonight, we'll start on a positive note. Pascal Siakam is back and he looks healthy. He's a little bit rusty. By all accounts, he has not played a game a five on five game in six months now. So we're going to expect some little rust. He's on a minutes restriction. It takes a while guys to get back into basketball shape, basketball rhythm. You could see that in some bunnies that he missed inside. Some might argue he's been missing those shots for about two years, but the shot looked good on the two, two, three point attempts that he did take. It looks good. It looks fluid. Nick nurse seems to believe that they've done enough work to restructure that shot off the shoulder surgery that he should have a better shooting season. So we're just going to have to take a wait and see approach. And I wouldn't judge anything that Pascal Siakam does for at least five to six games. Let him get his rhythm. Let him get back into basketball shape. As he mentioned, he was considering doing the run with the 905. Figured, why not just do the run with the big club? Go up against proper competition right out the gate. And, you know, he didn't duck the competition. He went up right against a team that a lot of people consider the championship contenders and the number one title contenders in the Brooklyn Nets. And he didn't look bad. He didn't look bad. It was a little bit disorganized. Obviously, when you try to replace in your lineup your fifth option with a new first option, a lot of people are going to be a little bit confused. And the Raptors certainly looked a little confused tonight on offense. But the good news is Spicy P is back. There was no issues with that shoulder. Everything looked healthy. My second takeaway of the night is that the Raptors offense is depressing and I believe that their defense is a little bit overrated. Now, defenses are geared to push other teams' offenses into taking bad shots and the Raptors give up a lot of really good shots as evidenced by the fact that every single starter for the Brooklyn Nets shot over 50% or better, including Kevin Durant, who was red hot, over 60% from the field. Now, you're not going to stop Kevin Durant on a nightly basis. You're going to have to let him get his. The issue here was letting Patty Mills, getting all the other players going, Blake Griffin. You got to stop something if you're a Raptors defense. And tonight, the Raptors really didn't stop anything. I was particularly disappointed in OG and Anobi's defensive performance. Seemed like he was just really sort of sleepwalking. Scotty Barnes, you know, for all the advancements on offense he's looked a little step slow on defense especially when matched up against elite elite two guards elite point guards and that's to be expected he's a really big guy and he's a rookie so i don't necessarily agree with nick nurse's decision to start scotty out on james harden i think durant might have been a better matchup and obviously the raptors offense and defense sorry their defense is very switch heavy so Chances are you're going to have Scotty Barnes getting switched on to bigs and and point guards. But I just don't think that the Raptors fought very hard on defense. Patty Mills was consistently open in the corner. There were times when he was open underneath the basket. Uh, And to talk about the offense, frankly, this offense is depressing. I watch a lot of NBA games. I watch a lot of other teams play and run actions to get their offensive players going. The Raptors offense just crawls, especially with Fred Van Vliet. I know people are going to get hard on me for consistently harping on Fred Van Vliet's ball dominance, but he simply stagnates the offense. There are so many times in any game, you can go back, look at any game where 14, 15 seconds into a possession and the ball hasn't moved once. And again, this just doesn't happen when he's not on the court. It tends to happen most when he's on the court. The Raptors simply play slower. It does not necessarily lend to, lend to their strengths to play to play at that pace, and it really completely goes into Brooklyn's hands to play at that pace. They're an older team. We had every advantage in transition. We simply didn't push enough. There were some pretty botched opportunities. I think that was a wide open dunk that OG clearly got fouled, wasn't called. I think 
complaining about the refs is just getting to a point where I find I find myself repeating myself all the time that the whistle seems a little uneven. But to be honest, the Brooklyn Nets also got a couple of really, really short-ended calls tonight. So it's not all on the refs. A lot of this is just on the Raptors' offense and the type of shots that the offense is creating. And quite frankly, a lack of shot discipline. Precious Achua had a really good night. You know, he wasn't a problem tonight. And God, if he had gone to his normal, pers- you know, if he had played like he usually plays, this would have been a blowout. So Precious Achua had probably his best game as a Raptor in the regular season. So that was very encouraging. Scotty Barnes, honestly, this this goes right into my next point. So I just won't talk about Scotty Barnes right now. OG Ananobi struggled going one for six from three. Really didn't get one to drop until the fourth quarter. So he was cold. He was pressing. And again, that over dominance of Fred VanVleet, there's at least three to four very contested layup attempts that aren't even close every game. And you can just tell when the Raptors are going back on defense how much a possession like that throws you off defensively because it's it's sort of a catch-22. Because on the one hand, you've got your point guard who's the head of your defense now flailing and falling underneath the basket complaining about a call. And then the other t- <laughs> the other team is going five on four the other way and it puts so much pressure and usually results in an open three in the corner or a wide open dunk. And it's just, it's a four point swing. Any way you look at it, it's a four point swing because it's two points you didn't get and it's two or three points that they get. So I would really like to see the Raptors, you know, implement more motion in their offense. There's so much ISO, ISO, ISO on everything. So it's a little bit depressing to watch. The compete level just wasn't there tonight. It's like they didn't show up. You saw a very, you saw two encouraging stretches. There was a stretch with Barnes on the court to end the half where the Raptors went on that run and Scotty got, you know, a couple of steals from that career high uh, night that he had for five steals. And then there was another possess- there was another stretch when Fred Van Vliet went to the bench where they just milked OG Ananobi in the post at, in the first quarter. Those were probably the only two places in the game where things looked really good. And then, of course, there was that Gary Trent, you know, hot shooting performance that nearly got them back into the game. But just as soon as he shot them into the game, very quickly shot them right out of the game as well. So, again, I think the Raptors, I don't know if this is too early to have a team only meeting, but this offense is an absolute mess in the half court and they just don't run enough for that to not be as big a problem as it's been. My third point is I am a little bit worried about Scotty Barnes. Now, I mentioned before the game that with Pascal Siakam back and with the established relationship of Fred VanVleet, Pascal Siakam, and we all know that Gary Trent is going to take 15, 16, 17 shots every single game. I was worried that this would result in OG and Barnes specifically getting shafted as the fourth and fifth options in that offense. And frankly, they're the most efficient players among the five players. So your shot distribution chart really needs to be inverted, basically. But we saw Scotty Barnes get off to a hot start, right? Just manufacturing offense. There's, I can count two plays that they really ran for him the entire game. And that's that's depressing, really. For as good as he's been, that is just unacceptable. And there was and one of those plays was actually called by Nick Nurse, where he demanded that Svi Mihailik get Scotty Barnes a, a post-up opportunity where Scotty could draw the double. And then I think that resulted in a foul. So it was just, uh, it was sort of sad to see Scotty just running up and down, up and down, up and down the court, playing his tail off on, on defense to the best of his ability, picking up chippy fouls. But then on the other side, he's just kind of standing around, being a pick setter. And, you know, before the final two minutes of the game, he had attempted five shots the whole game. And he'd made four of them. And I don't really think that, you know, that contested three with the shot clock going down really should count. So he really was 80% from the field up until that last little minute. And this is the first time Scotty Barnes has scored in single digits all season. Coincidence? I think not. Because this was immediately my worry the minute I heard that Pascal Siakam was coming back. I'm like, I hope this does not impact Scotty Barnes' touches. And it did. It really did. 
and the Raptors simply look better when Scotty is initiating the offense. I, I don't, you know, I really don't care how much you support Fred Van Vliet or think that he's a point guard or that he's the best point guard in the NBA. You can think that all you want. The point is that the Raptors offense simply works better with Fred Van Vliet off the ball. And if you're going to have Scotty Barnes only getting six, seven shots in a game, I would like to see him as a primary facilitator because he's very good at it. And right now they're basically relegating him to OG's old role. And he really can't fulfill that role because he doesn't have the gravity that OG did as a shooter. So he's just kind of clogging up space, not getting the ball, trying to get offensive rebounds. You're turning this guy into a glorified Reggie Evans, and I just don't like it. So I know that Nick Nurse is notorious for letting offenses sort of dictate their own flow as long as the defense is making sense. Well, tonight the defense didn't make sense, and I think this offense honestly needs an intervention or an exorcism. It's looked really ugly, like three, four minutes without a single a single decent possession being generated. It's just not conducive to playoff basketball. And if the Raptors have their aspirations set higher, if they're looking to make some noise in the playoffs potentially, because the talent is there. I just don't think that the pecking order is right. I don't think the shot distribution is right. And I really think that they let one get away here. Raptors lose a tough one here. On to the next one. Hopefully they'll get Pascal Siakam implemented. Hopefully OG has a bounce back game next game, refines that shooting rhythm. Hopefully Fred Van Bleek can move off the ball. Let us know down in the comments below if you agree with our three takes and hit that subscribe button, hit the notifications. It really helps the algorithm. And, you know, let's go Raptors. We're all rooting for it. May not always have the same takes, may not always think that the same guys in the same situations are the problems, but we can agree that we're all rooting for this team and we're happy that they're getting healthy. Hopefully Ken Birch is back next game. Really need that guy. Really missed him tonight. And on to the next one. Peace.